Come on. Just one more. Dude, you suck at this. Oh yeah? Hmm, still kinda suck. Hmm. Surely there's a way to build a better AI for space invaders. If you've seen DeepMind's documentary on AlphaGo, you know that AI can do some pretty cool things when it comes to playing games. Now the technique that the DeepMind team actually used is a technique called reinforcement learning. The awesome thing about reinforcement learning is that it can be used to play games in a whole heap of different open world environments. Now one of the games that it just so happens to be pretty good at playing is Space Invaders. So in this video we're going to see if we can build a reinforcement learning to play and eventually crush Space Invaders. Let's take a look. So in order to build our AI and specifically our reinforcement learning model, we're going to first up need an environment. Now the environment that we're going to be using is OpenAI Gym. So OpenAI Gym is a toolkit that's built obviously by OpenAI that gives us a whole bunch of different environments that we can begin to play with, with Python machine learning and reinforcement learning. Now, if you go to, or if you actually want to take a look at this yourself, you can go to gym.openai.com and select environments. And there's a whole heap of different types of environments. The ones that I'm going to be focusing on are Atari. And if we actually take a look, Space Invaders is just down there. So this is gonna be the one that we focus on. Uh, we'll actually focus on the non-RAM version. And this is gonna allow us to actually train a model to be able to go ahead and eventually play Space Invaders and see what it actually performs like. So before actually going ahead and actually trying to build the AI or the reinforcement learning model, what I first decided to do is initially set up a baseline Space Invaders environment. Now in terms of what actions I'd actually take in that environment, so this particular line here, so it's a little bit of Python code, so environment.actionspace.sample, this basically means we're just gonna take random actions. So it's akin to really just button mashing during Space Invaders. But really this gives me an idea as to whether or not the environment is likely to work or not, whether or not we're gonna encounter any issues. So if we actually run this code cell, what we'll actually see is Space Invaders just taking random steps. And again, there's no AI here. There's no real smart. It's really just taking random actions and seeing how it performs. Now, ideally, what I'd like to see is after training the AI and actually applying the AI, to the Space Invaders environment that the score or the final score that we're able to get after three lives is around 1200. So that's sort of the benchmark and ideally what I wanna to try to get to. So that will mean that it's completely cleared the first stage and it begins starting to clear the next stage. So that's gonna take a little bit more research So now it's time to actually start getting into the modeling and doing a little bit of research on reinforcement learning models. So after a ton of research and trying out maybe eight, nine or even 10 different reinforcement learning libraries, I finally settled on the stable baselines package. Now, the cool thing about stable baselines is it's actually written by the OpenAI team. So it's actually quite stable as the name implies. So the thing when you're actually going ahead and trying to build one of these reinforcement learning models, as I found out, is that there's a whole heap of different implementations out there. But the smallest error is going to mean that your AI model doesn't actually end up playing that well. So I ended up trying a whole bunch of different algorithms. Some I actually trained for up to like 10 days and still weren't performing that well. So they were probably no better than what you saw in the random screen. But stable baselines on the other hand might have just provided the ideal environment and the ideal code to actually produce something that's actually pretty good. So once I decided on stable baselines, it was time to code up the reinforcement learning model and start training our AI. So this is stable baselines. Now, one of the cool things about stable baselines, given the fact that it's written by the OpenAI team, is that it works pretty seamlessly with the different OpenAI environments. This includes Space Invaders. The other cool thing is that you've also got a number of different reinforcement learning algorithms. So during testing, I ended up trying DQN, DDPG, PPO2, which is optimized if you've got a GPU on your computer, it helps it train a whole heap faster. The model that I actually ended up training the most ended up being Acer. So I dug into that one a whole heap more.
So after a bunch of coding, this ended up being the final code. So what we ended up using, as I was saying, so was stable baselines. And you can see that I was using ASAR, PPO and DQN. So I tried a bunch of different types of algorithms to ideally get the best possible model. Now I also set up a callback. So this allowed me to save a instance of that model every 10,000 steps. Now I actually ended up training this particular model, so this particular AI for 40 million steps. So that this took around about four or five days. And you can see here that there are a whole bunch of different models. So starts out at 10,000 and the last and final one right down there is 40 million. Now, what I also did is I split up the code into some training code and some testing code. So this allowed me to test out how the model was performing day by day. Sometimes as I was saying, what happened happens is you might try to train a model for quite a long period of time and then the model doesn't actually end up performing that well. So when I was doing the research ages ago and trying out different things like Keras RL and trying out some of the other different reinforcement libraries, I was training for multiple days and then still ended up with a crappy model. So by splitting up this code, this allowed me to train and test at the same time. I also monitored the training through TensorBoard. So you can see here that the episode reward, and this is ideally how well the model was performing, was increasing over time. Now I probably could have trained a little bit longer and eventually got a model that performed a whole heap better, but four or five days ended up being my cap. Now let's take a look as to how it actually performed. So what you'll see is the model at different stages. So right at the start of the training, somewhere in the middle, and then the final end product. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And let me know if you'd like to see some code around how to actually build one of these yourself. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.